Hello Divine Feminine and welcome to your power message for Wednesday, wonderful Wednesday now. The angels are asking me to share with you today how important it is to see every day as a fresh start. Every day is a new beginning. It's really powerful because the sun's out today and there's been lots of cleansing going on inside and outside. There's been snowy weather, there's been lots of rain here in the UK, torrential rain, you know, where it comes down you think, is it ever going to stop? You know, it sounds like the end of the world out there. But then the sun comes out. After every storm, the sun will come out. And it's the same in your own life, whether it's something you're going through with your health right now, something you're going through with your twin, if you aren't communicating or you're wondering when it's going to happen, or you've come to a block or a stop in career or finances or in some other area of your life. Maybe you are so close to hitting that goal but it just doesn't seem to be pushing through. And you're thinking, what now? And the angels are saying to you, breathe, have faith and know that the best is yet to come because it is. Those breakthroughs are at hand. We're moving forward stronger than ever. And we've been going through so much lately in the body, ascension, trauma release. I spoke about that on Sunday very powerfully. And I'm going to be talking about it later on today. And can I just say, it's so good to be able to do this today. Okay, if any of you have been dealing with frozen shoulder or any feelings in the body, you know, anything physical, and you feel you can move again today, today is the start of a new day. So every day we begin again. We believe, we have faith, we see ourselves fully healed and restored with light. And the angels gave me a little vision this morning that was so beautiful. Every now and again, they give me a glance of something. And I think, am I dreaming? Am I on the other side? What's this all about? And this morning when I woke up, you know, my eyes were still closed. I was very conscious. I wasn't kind of in between sleep and awakeness. I was just, you know, kind of lying there and I was feeling grateful. And it was like in my mind's eye, they showed me a vision of a big cloud party and I saw Jesus looking at me I saw the angels flying around I saw some spirit animals up there as well and I had this sense of peace flow over me you were not alone you were not alone and it's your job to tell others that they are not alone either because we have this heavenly presence around us always and one day you may just get that glance that glimmer of heaven and you realise that, wow, heaven is actually a place on earth. Heaven is earth. That's why we come here, to make it that way. Because our life and the journey we have in this school of life, the earth plane, can be good or bad, high or low, negative or positive. But it's all about our perception. If you feel your life is hell right now, it's your perception of it. If you feel it's heavenly, and it feels good, it's your perception of it. And even when we go through the rough times, the hellish times, the painful times, whether it's in the mind or in the body, we can look on the bright side and find the blessing within the lesson. Because there's always what? There's always a blessing from every perceived mistake. Because there are no mistakes. Everything leads where it's meant to be. It's the same with our journey. You know, sometimes we struggle to go on. As twin flames, we wonder why. Why do we get punished? Why do we get hurt? Why? And it's all to grow. We don't get punished. We get liberated. We get celebrated. We get, in a way, reformed and moulded into the person we've come here to be. Everything we go through grows us. It builds our warrior spirit, it builds our strength, it gives us the tools we need for our mission and purpose so we can help others and have empathy and compassion and understanding. And that's really what they want you to know. So whatever you're going through today, however it feels, you've got this because heaven has got you. And that's what they want you to know. And there's a real balance taking place within the feminine and masculine aspects of the self. And that's what they showed me. You know, I was having issues with the right side of my body. You know, I woke up on Friday with really bad frozen shoulder. I couldn't move my arm at all. 
you know, it was started coming back, the feeling started really coming back on Sunday, but I had two days of what I perceived as hellish pain Friday and Saturday because it took me out of the equation. You know, it, it's hard when you can't do things you used to do, and it even was hard for me to lift up my arm and, and you know, brush my hair, or I couldn't do these things. So when these things come to slow us down, we're being guided to relax and rest and take it easy and be good to ourselves. And when you are in charge of your schedule and you call on the angels to help you, it gives you that time. Because a lot of the times as divine feminines, especially, we are running around. You know, they don't call us runners for, you know, runners, chasers. Well, chasers really for nothing because, you know, we chase our dreams we chase what we want, we go forward towards it. And also we run towards what we want too. Our masculines, you know, the things we want to create in our life. And sometimes we just need to slow down. And when we slow down, we have time to regroup and rebalance and regain our power. And things then have the chance to come towards us. But we have the time to catch up with where we are. So in other words, when we start running, or chasing then we allow everything to come towards us at the right time and you know I don't really buy into this runner chaser dynamic because it's not really about that it's about understanding the energies of the feminine and the divine masculine and if you're new here welcome as well you know understand that the feminine can be both man or woman Okay, it's not gender specific and, you know, a couple of people have been commenting about that because of the way I channel the readings, especially the DM to DF readings. It's just easy for me to channel in that way, to say him or her. So put it into your situation. Okay, you'll know you're the divine family because you'll know it, you'll feel it inside, you'll feel very spiritual, very awake, aware. You'll feel like you're kind of slowing down in a way, but things are also speeding up. And the divine feminine is kind of the controller, okay? The way I like to see it is the feminines are the controller. And that's what we have to learn to let go of. We have to learn to release control around certain things because we like to have a plan. We like to sort things out. We are nurturers. So the feminine is the nurturer. So if you know that's you, even if you're a guy, you're operating in your feminine self right now. And that's okay doesn't mean you're weak or it doesn't really even mean you're vulnerable. It means you are strong and powerful. There's nothing more powerful than a divine feminine in spiritual power and strength. You feel it all throughout your body. You are a warrior. You can handle anything that's going on. So when you're operating in your feminine self, you're very switched on. You're very tuned into God and the higher power in your own self. The feminines learn through their spiritual awareness. They're clear awareness aware of our vision aware of our feelings our emotions the things we hear the things we see the things we feel and really that's in a way the right side of you because you understand yourself very powerfully when you're connected with source so the feminine is kind of the controller and we have to learn to let go of control that means it's okay to take a step back it's okay to allow things you want, including your twin, to come towards you. It's okay to give, but we also have to receive. So the feminine learns how to slow down and stop trying so hard because we learn that when we try and try and try and try and we feel like we're not getting anywhere, we get depleted and drained and then we start feeling things physically. Instead, it's better to open your arms to receive. And this is also why we may go through things in the physical self, because we're also striving so hard for our dreams, the things we want to manifest, the things we're trying to create, the things that we want. And there's nothing wrong with that because we want a better life. We want a better career, more money, success, all the things we deserve because we are valuable and worthy of those things. But we also have to slow down and let those things come to us. Or in other words, let them catch us up. When we slow down, they come towards us in that way. And the masculine is, you know, more in tune with the physical stuff, the 3D world. The masculines learn 
Again, masculines can be man or woman. Masculines learn through their physical environment and their physical experiences. So they're more likely to be involved in karmic relationships or addictions or toxic things. Things that don't really serve them, that, that show them their truth. You know, when they're experiencing those kinds of lessons, they realise what they do want and what they don't want. What they are drawn to and what they're, you know, being repelled against. They're being guided to the feminine's light constantly. And this is why they go within and process and think and feel and understand. It's their way. And it doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It just means it's different than the divine feminine way. There's nothing wrong with that. It's their right. So as a divine feminine, we learn to have compassion and empathy and understanding about why the masculines do what they do instead of judging them all the time, blaming them all the time, because you are one. And most of the time as a divine feminine, the struggle comes up because we're craving their attention or we're craving their love or we're craving things from them. And it's really important that we learn how to give ourselves what we need to satisfy ourselves through our connection with ourself and source because the masculines live inside of us. Your twin flame lives inside of you. Feminines live in masculines, masculines live in feminine. And everything you want is within you. So instead of turning to them for the answers, turning to them for the love, turning to them, turn to yourself. When you get in the union right, it creates outer union. When you're at peace with yourself and you get right with yourself, everything else starts falling into place. So if you're dealing with any heavy energies, you know, any frozen shoulder or heavy legs or headaches or any of the symptoms we talk about, it's because you are preparing for the next stage and you're releasing and letting go and learning to understand. So that's what they want to share today. And, you know, the body as well, you are masculine and feminine incorporated in one body because your masculine lives in you and you live in them. But also there's feminine and masculine aspects within you, within me, within everyone. And as we get closer to union, we'll experience more of the other energy to balance it out. So when you're in union like me, you know, I've been in union for coming up to four years in July. My energy most of the time is very balanced and I experience both energies. So I'm able to give love and receive love equally from George and not over try or over want or over, forgive me, fear over need because everything is fear based like that. You know, when we want things now, when we get angry, when we get frustrated with things, it's the ego acting up. It's our inner child really craving attention and love. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the ego will tend to edge all the goodness out. So we don't focus on the good. We focus on the bad and the negative. And then when we're giving those things attention, it creates more momentum and more attention to those things we don't want. So we learn to shift the balance through our spiritual practices such as meditation, breath work, you know, going outdoors in nature, affirming, setting intentions, visualization, you know, all the spiritual things, using spiritual tools like cards, crystals, having readings, doing readings, focusing on service. These are all the things that shift our vibration, our energy and our awareness from what we don't want into what we do want, which is more aligned with the creator and God. So when you get that right, you feel more balanced. And if there is anything going on, it can be one part of you playing up. So for example, I know that the masculine energy within me has been experiencing this frozen shoulder and it's on the right side. So the angels have showed me that right side is very much connected with my masculine energy right now. Now that can always shift. Okay? And it, it depends on what you feel in yourself, what you know. So, for example, the angels have shown me the right side of my own self is the right, the right side of my body is my masculine side. And the left side is connected with my feminine side. That's what I feel. It may be different for you. It could be the other way around. And they also show you things very clearly. You may have noticed I've changed my crystal. Okay, I was putting a cage on. And with ascension angels, you know, we were shifting the crystals. But every single crystal I've put into that cage lately, it's been falling out. It's been trying to find a way out. It's been, you know, even doing a reading, it's fell on the table. And I'm like, I'm not meant to be doing that right now. So I went, I've gone back to this one, which is very powerful. Abradite, this is about 
for me, this gives me protection and strength and it brings in healing energy. You know, wearing green today because it's the color of Archangel Raphael. Very healing energy. So do what feels good to you. So the point I'm making is today is a new day. A day to begin again. To start again. To see things clearly. And to say, I've got this because I know that heaven has got me. I know I'm not alone. And I know that whatever I'm going through, whether it's something in the physical self or a blip in the road or a fork in the road or an issue with me and my twin or a miscommunication, whatever it is, this too shall pass and better things are to come. And that's what they want you to know. So today I'm going to bring in three decks of cards for us and then I'm going to bring in the book. So I'm going to bring in Take Art Inspiration from A Course of Love. This is a beautiful deck. I haven't used this for a while. So I'm going to bring this in. And, you know, regarding the physical stuff, you're not out of the woods yet. You know, you're still going to be feeling these things. You know, mine isn't fully healed. I still went and picked this deck up then. I had a little bit of pain there, but it's getting easier every single day. So we learn how to move through the pain and deal with it, knowing this too shall pass. I'm also going to use the B Oracle. Okay, the B Oracle. One of our soul sisters gifted this to me, you know, a few years ago. It's a gorgeous deck. So the bees are also about the pollinators. And as feminines, we are pollinators. You know, we are the queen bee of our reality. So what do we need to know? What do we need to know? And I'm also going to bring in the power thought cards. So we're going to do a power thought from Louise Hay. So what do we need to know? What power thoughts have we got today? Thank you, angels. Can we have a power thought of the day, please? A power thought for the divine feminines. There we go. I'm taking that one. And I've got this beautiful deck, the Empowering Questions. So what questions can we be asking ourselves today? I'm going to use this for the masculines as well. What does love mean to me? Look at that. Wow. What does love mean to me? So this is what we need to be asking ourselves today. What does love mean to you? It may be being with your divine masculine. That may be what love means to you. Your masculine themselves is love. But what does love really mean? Love is unconditional. Love is the connection you have with your creator. Love is the way you feel when you look into the, the garden, you see the sun shining. Love is the way you feel when you know you are supported and safe. Love is love. Love is the answer to all of the questions. Love is the most powerful force in the universe. What does love mean to you? Love to me means feeling at peace. When I feel at peace, I know I'm loving myself. I know I'm trusting myself. I know I'm trusting in God. I know I'm trusting the plan in divine timing, no matter what. No matter what's going on around me or, you know, with people in my life or with George. Love is the answer. Because love creates miracles. Love creates the way. Love shows the way. Fear creates pain and drama and negativity and disastrous things in our lives love is the answer so sit with that message today you know close your eyes and feel love what does love mean to you what does love really mean love is the fruit of the spirit compassion empathy understanding feeling knowingness trust belief you know, all the magical things, patience, having faith in love. That's what love truly is. So take heart. A God of love does not do battle for truth and needs no protection. Now, isn't that powerful? Because God loves you. Your creator loves you. He loves you so much. He threw the mold away when he made you. There's nobody like you. So God does not battle for truth nor needs no protection. So in other words, you don't need to worry or fear when you're going through the battles of your life or you're going through struggles because God is with you and that's the truth. And you are divinely protected, always. We've also got the ego, which is the fear-based energies, the struggle, can also be the inner child when the inner child is playing up. You know, think about a child. You know, they can be beautiful and loving, but they can also be crazy and act out, you know, because they have all this energy in them. And the energy in you, you know, is always thriving. So the ego is the teacher 
that you have relied upon when you have relied upon yourself as your own teacher. So what this is really saying is, when you rely on something bigger than you, you know you're safe and protected. You know you can handle anything that's going on. When you try and do it all yourself, that's where the struggles come in. Because we are warriors and we are strong and we are created in God's image. That means we are manifestors and magicians of our reality. But we also need to trust that there's something else that we have access to. You know, magician, you know, think about real. I mean, I'm not talking about magicians who kind of do illusions. I'm talking about, you know, when you think about a real magical magician or, you know, wizard like Harry Potter or, you know, they can connect with something else, something bigger, something outside of themselves for the power. And that's where your power comes from. It comes from above you. And that will always give you the strength you need to get through the battles in your life. Because with God, all things are possible. So when we rely on ourselves, we struggle. When we rely on God, we handle it. And that's really what they want you to know. Join minds. And this is also you and your twin. You are joined. You are one. You are the energies within each other. And that's why nothing is ever missing and separation is illusion. But it's about feeling and understanding and knowing that. And you know, when you first find out about this journey, it can be very confusing because we've always been taught by society and film and everything else that love is easy. Real love isn't easy. Life isn't easy. It's how we learn and grow. Otherwise, there'd be no point to come here. We come here to grow and evolve and get stronger and build our soul. Every life is a new opportunity. Like every day we begin again. And that's what you're being reminded today. That this is an opportunity in this body, in this life to begin again. To experience new things. That's why we come. That's why it can seem hard. So before you judge or say how bad everything is, learn a little bit about the journey. And the playlists are there for you. Twin Flames, everything you need to know. There's a playlist full of videos. There's playlists full of videos about ascension and number sequences and, you know, the masculine's journey and everything that you need is there. You just have to take the time to loop. And every reading is timeless. It will find you at the right time, the time when you need it the most. So joint minds cannot think separately and have no hidden thoughts. They are, in fact, not minds in the plural at all, but all one mind. So this is kind of the hive mind. That's what they give me the energy of. That's why I've been guided to this B deck, I feel. Because the hive mind, first of all, is knowing that you are one with all. You are a collective vibrational energy. You are one with source. You are part of everything that ever was, ever is, and ever will be. That's why you are a telepathic being. That's why you can think about someone and then, boom, they ring you up. Or you see something about them somewhere because the law of attraction is starting to pull them into your reality field. Because you're feeling the power of the love, you're feeling the power of the connection. So this is really about we are all one. We are all connected. Everyone who lives here on earth is connected with everything. Not everyone is aware of that or awake to that though. But when you are, you realize that you are one with all. But you are more connected with your twin than ever. So this is really also about you and your twin are joined. You know, that means that there is no separation. So what you think, sometimes they think too. So in other words, don't doubt that they love you or care about you because you experience these mirrored energies. They are your greatest teacher. What you think about your twin is really a reflection of what's going on within. So for example, when your masculine is nasty to you, says things that hurt you, remember first of all that nobody can hurt you without your own permission and that gives you strength because that allows you to shield yourself and not take it personally. But if they are lashing out at you, it's because of their own issues and their own fears and insecurities. It's because of how they feel about themselves, not you. So you have to see it in a higher way. So when we are bad mouthing our divine masculine and saying how you know horrible they are and calling them names and all these things that's really what we're doing to ourselves because we are one and that's why you know learning how to 
respond with love instead of reacting in fear is the power because the ego is creating all the fear and the love is creating all the power so it's about rising above and knowing the truth and the truth is that you won't get anywhere if you continue bad mouthing your twin or seeing this journey as a struggle we have to rise above and see it in a brand new way every day is an opportunity to begin again and then you get off the treadmill you know, treadmills, you kind of run, 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 put all the effort in, but you don't get anywhere. Or you're on a carousel going round and round and round and round, but you don't get anywhere. Mary Poppins comes in with a bit of magic and makes the horses jump off and go on an adventure. So see this day as a new adventure. You have that power. The magic is within you. So it's about understanding that you and your twin are one. And right now you have the same vision. It may not seem that way because they may be battling a karmic situation. Or they may be somewhere else right now. But they want what you want. They're just dealing with this a bit differently. So the trust today needs to be in your inner wisdom. He says, I trust my inner wisdom. This is the divine feminine here. And what's she doing? She's smelling flowers. That means she's aware of her environment. She's paying attention to the beauty in life. She's seeing things and how magical they are. She's noticing that sunshine that comes out after the storm. As I go about my daily affairs, I listen to my own guidance. My intuition is always on my side and I trust it to be there at all times because I am safe. So feminine say today on this wonderful Wednesday, I am safe. I trust my intuition at all times. I listen to my own self. I listen to my own inner guidance, but I know I have support from heaven when I need it. As I go about my daily affairs, my business, my day, I trust that all is well, that I am protected and I am safe. And I seek out love. What does love mean to me today? Love can be a smile from a stranger. Somebody giving you something you need when you need it. Hearing a message that resonates with your soul and it gives you angel bumps. Waking up and feeling at peace, feeling warm, comfortable. Putting on your favourite clothes. Feeling excited about something you're doing. Passionate about it. That's love. These are all ways we feel. They give me fear and experience love. And all paths lead home. The way we see things that resonate with us. You know, I know so many of you have been watching that series on Netflix like I have. Sex Life. Okay, I was calling it Sex Drive for a while. And, you know, it's just got such an amazing story to it. And I'm not, you know, spoilers... But at the end, you know, I watched the whole series and the end episode, I just cried all the way through because it was so powerful about everything resolving and finding its way because all paths lead home. All paths lead home. So beautiful. So whatever you've been through, God's got you. There's a plan. There's a doorway opening. There's always a way. Look at this, first of all, before I even look at it. That is the universe. Galactic power. That you come from somewhere other than the earth. That you are part of something much bigger than, than you. You know, you're connected with the universe. It says, be star cluster. Be star cluster. Very powerful. It says, cosmic be mother. And what I'm feeling with this is, I'm going to have a quick look in the book for this as well. Because it's such a powerful deck. And, you know, I don't know where you would get this deck from. One of our soul sisters gifted me to the, this to me about three years ago. It's very beautiful and, you know, it's, oh, it is, the Be Oracle, it's by, um, channeled by Angie Twyde Twiddell, Sacred Be Priestess and Be Guardian. So obviously I'll put all the cards I'm using, you know, in the description box as well. But first of all, we've got the number 11, which is about 1111 11 energy. So 1111 11 energy is the way the universe connects with you and speaks to you. So when we first wake up on this journey, one of the first numbers we start seeing is 1111. 11. Because it's the universe saying, hello, there's something bigger going on. You know, it reminds me of when me and George moved into this house. You know, the, the gas guy come round and we just got talking. And, you know, he didn't know what me and George do. But he, we just got talking and he started saying, do you know, the weirdest thing has been happening to me lately. I keep seeing 11, 11. Well, he asked the right people, didn't he? Because me and George both got involved in the conversation and, you know, really did enlighten him. And 1111 is the number of enlightenment. 
And we see constantly on this journey, you might think, oh, you're only going to see 11, 11 when you're waking up. But we wake up constantly. We enlighten ourselves constantly. We receive our hard moments constantly on this journey. It doesn't matter how young or old you are. It doesn't matter whether you're in separation, communication or union. What matters is how we grow. We are all light workers. We're all connected with the light. So the universe will communicate through 1111 when you're realizing certain things or when you need to remember who you are. You know, maybe you were struggling in your situation and all you can think about is the struggle and the fear and boom, you see 1111. The universe is saying, hey, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm with you. I haven't forgotten about you. You're not alone. So I'm also feeling this too. So it says a constellation of stars. Actually, let me go back down to the message because... You know, it's, it's saying a constellation of stars. And, you know, what I'm feeling with that, first of all, is like they give me the word cluster because cluster is a, gr is a kind of a grouping. And we're here as a group, you know, we're a group of divine feminines watching this video. Maybe you're a masculine watching this video. Maybe you're just watching this video. But we are a cluster or a group of like-minded spiritual beings. And we're gathering here together to step into our star power which means you are the star of your own show. You know, you are the center of your own universe. So act that way. Don't sit on the bench. Don't sit on the sidelines when this is your show. For example, the, for the universe, there's only you. You know, the universe sees everyone as individual and sees everyone as uniquely special. So it's like, imagine everyone else in the world falls away and there's only you. That's how the universe sees you. That means the universe blesses you. And is there for you and listens to you. You know, it's the same with the archangels. The archangels are non-denominational. That means they can be with me and you and, you know, the cat down the road, as Ralph Smart would say, all at the same time. You know, they can be with us all at the same time. But for them, they only see you. So in other words, the archangels give you their full attention. So don't feel like you were taking their attention away from someone else or they can't give you everything fully because of other people's prayers the archangels are designed that way god created them that way for you you know angels are messengers of god they are a bridge to him we don't worship angels we give thanks to the angels and that's really giving thanks to god who made them so it's about seeing everything in the right way so i'm seeing this cluster of stars i'm a star you're a star we are stars of our own show it says when death comes and when death is very much about change okay because they, I mean, they're not really guiding me to read what it says, okay? It says, you know, when death came to certain people, and what I'm feeling with this, I'm not being guided to read this guidebook. It's, it's rare I read the guidebooks, okay? It's the kind of the Liz Harrison rule to throw them away or keep them, you know, so we know what they are, but to do it through your intuition. And they're not allowing me to see the message. So what they're saying is death is about rebirth. This is about rebirth. You know, when a star is born, it's born through pain. And, you know, boom, like this big shock to the system in a way. So in other words, throughout this journey of life and throughout the twin flame journey, we'll be reborn constantly. And that's what I'm being shown with the 1111. It's like constant awakenings, constant, you know, rebirth, constant change. Life is change and change is good. It's the ego that doesn't like it because it tries to edge all the goodness out. We get afraid of that. So... When we go through certain things that challenge us, that knock us down to our knees, we have to find strength to carry on. And that's being reborn. That's the, the death energy of the tarot, you know, endings and new beginnings. Rebirth, stripping away the past to begin again, to start again. So what they show me is every day is an opportunity to begin again. When we go to bed, is the death of that day. And when we wake up, it's the start of a new day. It's the birth of a new day. And that's what they want you to know. So really what I'm feeling with this star cluster energy is about we have found our way where we're meant to be for now. So in other words, this is your home in a way here because we are family and you're being guided to the truth. So we're here for each other. If you're struggling to find that like-minded energy at home with your family with your friends if they can't grasp what you're talking about or they don't understand you you're here for a reason so the message today says surprise someone just as you like pleasant surprises other people also enjoy receiving something that wasn't anticipated now what i'm feeling with this is this is the energy that anything can happen 
You know, they give me that song by Ellie Goulding, anything can happen because there's unexpected energy around. That means spontaneous energy. This means the masculines may want to surprise you today. You may surprise a friend with a gift or, you know, maybe you surprise yourself with something you do today. Planning such a gift is an act of nurturing love. So as a divine feminine, we just ultimately love giving. We love giving to others. We love surprising people. But we also have to give that to ourselves because, you know, I've certainly been there with friends as well as my twin, you know, people in the past where I've overly give. And I've felt like it hasn't been appreciated or reciprocated. And that's because we can over give because of our gentleness and the way we are. So we also have to learn to give to ourselves. So the person you may be surprising today may be yourself. By realising a truth or being gentle with yourself or giving yourself time or buying yourself a present and being nice to yourself, that's also surprising yourself because sometimes we surprise ourselves by our nurturing love. You receive inspiration as to the nature of the treat, spend time organising its elements and then experience the joy of sharing it with the recipient. Spontaneous surprises, such as a heartfelt compliment or an unexpected offer of help, are also invaluable. And that's the truth. You know, think how nice it is when someone gives you something you need without having to ask for it, or smiles at you when you need it, or gives you, you know, a hug when you're feeling down. These are invaluable things. What you give to another person, you're in truth giving to yourself. And that's why it's so easy sometimes when we realise that to forgive because we realise, wow, I actually gave all that time and love to my twin and me and my twin are one, so really I was giving it to myself. You know, we can also think about money. You know, if you're feeling bad because maybe you've lent your masculine money or you give them money, really your twin is you. So forgive because really you were giving to yourself. You know, you can't really you know, feel bad about that because you chose. Everything we give is a choice. We choose to give. We choose to be around. We choose to love. So don't feel that you've done anything wrong because you haven't. Usually the ego is bringing up, what about me? Poor me. And we are not victims. We are victors. So we have to take back our power. So when you give, you receive. You're also putting energy out into the universe, signaling that you enjoy happy surprises yourself. Life responds in kind by delivering wonderful delights to you in an abundant flow of giving and receiving. Enjoy the unexpected today, both in what you give and what you receive. Stay alert and notice anything beautiful or unusual because surprises come in many forms. And the thought for today is, I take great, great delight in creating a happy surprise for someone special. Maybe it's, you're thinking about, you know, Mother's Day or you're thinking about a birthday or a celebration coming up. You know, maybe thinking about how you can be good to yourself. You know, for me, we've got George's birthday. You know, it's George's birthday on the 30th of March. So I'm taking him out for a meal, got him some gifts. I'm also thinking, you know, what little things can I do for him? You know, and, and what can I do? But it's because it's doing it for me. You know, it's not even really to make him happy. It makes me happy to give. So that's also what we can do. So, you know, if you're thinking, oh, I want to reach out to my masculine today. I want to do something nice for him, surprise him. Do it for, for you and him. In other words, don't get triggered or angry if he doesn't respond or he doesn't give to you. That's having expectations. Just do it because you want to do it. You want to do something nice. Let go of the fear. As we share in this gift, we are momentarily transported to a place of childhood love. And the universe delivers wonderful things to me as well so when you give you're going to receive have that mindset today you know that's why we always feel so good when we give to others you know i mean whether it's giving a bottle of water to a homeless person or donating to charity or doing something good you know tipping a waitress you know giving someone something i remember once you know i was i went into a perfume store this was years ago about five six years ago and I was buying something special for my mom. And the lady was really helpful. You know, she spent a lot of time talking to me and giving to me, even when there was people waiting. And, you know, I come out of that store and I just felt lifted up because I felt very loved and like I'd been given what I needed. 
and you know i just felt all this love and the love was coming from me it wasn't coming from what she'd given to me it was the feeling of what of being created in me so i felt i had love to give so i went down and i bought her a box of thank you chocolates and I took them in and she was over the moon. But that isn't why I did it. I did it because I felt I wanted to share some of that love. And we feel like that sometimes. You know, we want to give. And sometimes people aren't ready to receive our love. Sometimes people are shocked by what we give. And they can pull back or shut down or they don't know what to say. And that's okay. And usually that's what goes on with your masculine. You're giving all this love and they've never been given to that way before. Or they aren't really loving themselves enough to be able to accept it fully in that moment. So don't take it personally. Just give and let the universe do with it what the universe needs to do. Because the universe is saying, just keep being you. Keep giving, loving, enjoying. And we will bless you when the time is right in the most magical, abundant way. I hope this helps. Be grateful for your life today. Be grateful for movement. Even if you haven't got much today, be grateful. See yourself as fully healed and whole and you will be. You know, when I was going through this shoulder pain, I just kept visualizing myself going woo and lifting up my arms and wow, look, I can do it today. I hope this helps. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.